it is uh, my honor to introduce uh, my scientific sister, a uh, former PhD student uh, of Professor Smalyanov, as I am, uh, Professor Yana Butko, uh, with a memorial talk uh, titled My Memories about Alex Smalyanov. Uh, Yana, you are welcome. Thank you. Uh, so my talk will be kind of uh, a complimentary talk to what was described by Professor Bogachev. Uh, so I would like to concentrate on, on the personality of Alex Malyanov, uh, not on his uh, um, uh, mathematical uh, results, but, but uh, on him, him uh, as a person. Okay, so first of all, so we met uh, um, in 1999, and uh, it turns out that those days um, it was not that custom to, to make photos. We did not have handies, uh, we, we did not have photo cameras with us every day. So somehow I have very few photos, uh, but but almost all what I have uh, are included in this in these slides. So as I said, uh, I met first uh, Professor Smolyanov uh, in the spring uh, uh, 1999. I was a student of second, I was a second year student at mechanics and mathematics departments of Moscow State University. And uh, those days, uh, exactly at the fourth semester, student has to, each student has to choose his uh, supervisor for the next three years. And it is supposed to write down, so each year it was supposed to write down some scientific work like coursework and at the end of studies uh, it should be diploma work uh, so it, it was a big challenge for, 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 for every um, for every student to, to choose a proper supervisor and so, so I since this is a very important decision I, I asked some people how how to make a right choice and I've got a very uh, good advice that I should not choose the topic or or direction of my researches, but I should really choose the person who will supervise my research. And exactly for, for this aim, um, uh, many, many different uh, special courses and special seminars were provided by Moscow State Universities uh, to, to, uh, to, to give uh, students of second year the possibility to, to meet different professors, different members of of the faculty and to make this choice. Uh, so this is uh, the way how I, uh, so I tried several seminars and then finally I, I entered the seminar of Alex Malyanov. It was um, a seminar for second year students and um, each year it was a different topic. Um, so at my year, so when I came first time for, to the seminar, um, and then Professor Smolyanov entered and uh, started to clarify what is um, what is um, heat equation, what is Brownian motion, what is Wiener measure, what is feynman katz formula, how it is related to each other, how it is related to Schrodinger equation and Feynman path integrals and quantum mechanics, and what happens if we consider manifolds, not Euclidean spaces, and uh, what he was doing uh, uh, in his current research with uh, Heinrich von Weizsäcker. Uh, quite fast, uh, around, I don't know, 20 minutes. Uh, and it's made so beautiful picture of, of a, a, a huge domain uh, and presented so wonderful connections between very different and very interesting objects that I was so impressed. I was so Begeistered, <laughs> I was um, um, so it, it, it was um, a, a very great emotional, great event. I have anymore, so I have made my choice. And um, so, what you see here, it is in Russian, but this is. Seminar and just uh, to give you a flavor of this seminar, just I will, um, 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 
introductive seminar for students of the keywords are linear spaces and manifolds, generalized functions of infinite dimensional argument, infinite dimensional pseudo differential operators, Virasora, Poisson, and Heisenberg algebras, uh, renormalization, statistical mechanics, Hopf equation. Um, um, paradoxon uh, of Einstein, Podolsky, Rosen, and Greenberg, Horn, Salinger of quantum mechanics, M theory. And the last line is no special um, preliminary knowledges are required. So this is exactly the style of Professor Smalana. So he was able, really was able to, to explain the main ideas of so wonderful things. And so I would say very advanced things for students of second year without um, preliminary knowledge of anything. Okay, so let us go to the uh, uh, second slide, also the next slide, but please pay attention to the photo. Uh, so Professor Smolyanov is writing Feynman, actually he's writing Feynman formula on the blackboard. Okay, so I would like, um, so after I have made my um, choice, I, after I have made my decision, who will be my supervisor? Of course, there were many years of studies um, following lecture course and seminar course of Professor Smalan of uh, writing these course works and then diploma work uh, and then PhD and, and, and so on and so forth. So I would like to, 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 to describe Alex Smalanov as a lecturer, first of all. So, um, uh, and he was also uh, the head of a uh, scientific seminar about infinite dimensional analysis. And uh, he always said that uh, we should follow the gold rule of a good speaker, namely what, what kind of the rule it is. So each good speaker should first explain what he was going, uh, what he's going to talk about, then talk about, and then uh, to summarize what his talk was about. So yeah, it's really very helpful. Um, concerning his lectures, um, they always were interesting and motivating, inspirating. And uh, so, uh, in Russia, there, in Russian language, there is a proverb so that we, we we see or we don't see the forest behind the trees. And uh, from his lectures, we were able to see the whole forest behind the trees. So uh, we we did not uh, or he did not concentrate it on some technical details, but on the picture, on the ideas, on the whole picture. So we were able to see uh, the, the whole forest and even from, from the point of view of a bird, like an eagle who is flying very high above the tree, uh, the, the forest. Uh, so as I said, uh, the, the content was the ideas, but nevertheless, of course, the techniques also um, was included. And he had uh, he proved uh, several things. In particular, during his special courses, he he was presenting uh, results of his current research projects, and he uh, um, was provi providing some proofs uh, during the lecture. And it always were live proofs in the sense that uh, he really he was very busy with a lot of projects, and he did not have time uh, to prepare scripts or whatever. So he really prepared himself to the lectures during his way to the university. He was just thinking about what should be the content. And then during the lecture, he was really proving live on li um, okay, live stream, that is proving now, not with preparation, so to say. And also you see here the, the picture. So this is a picture which is done in Kaiserslautern near, near University of Kaiserslautern in the forest. So he, um, Professor Smalanov liked very much to walk in the forest. So once it is, um, um, to, to this picture um, suits very well to the words that we see the forest behind the trees. But on the other hand, Professor Smala, it, it was his style. He he liked walk walking, and he um, he said that he is doing mathematics better when he is walking, not when he's sitting at, at his table and writing some text, but he, when he he is walking and thinking about different things. Uh, and, and also preparing to the lectures uh, was done during his way to the university. Okay, uh, so what also was interesting during his lectures, 
So there is a Russian proverb, it is written here in Russian, but I will translate uh, the, the meaning of the proverb. Uh, so, the, so Professor Smolyanov told that there is a, a, a usual version of this proverb, uh, this could, could be translated as um, time is needed for something important, for, for, for things, for business. Uh, and only a few time uh, you can uh, devote to, to some fun. So it was with a, with um, with uh, with preposition but here in the meeting. But Professor Smolanov uh, explained that this is a wrong uh, version of of this proverb, and actually the original version of this proverb is with and, not with but, but with and, and the meaning is completely different. The meaning is that. Uh, the main time should be devoted to the to the important things, business, and you should not forget uh, to uh, to invest some time to to fun to 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 to, to relax and yeah. So so he insisted that that the, the proper preposition should be and not but. May may I please uh, interrupt. So the traditional yeah. Russian version uh, is. Uh, time for business uh, uh, and uh, also some time for leisure. Smolyanov's uh, version is uh, time for business and time for leisure. Smolyanov you you really... said and twice in both versions. <laughs> yes, uh, but small time. So I'm... Okay, okay. You, you're, you're translating better. Okay. Uh, Probably better. I don't yeah, I mean, in Russian, it is the question about preposition and or but, but in the the meaning changes drastically. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, so uh, in English, uh, we have a di different structure. So the idea of Smolyanov uh, was that leisure is uh, really needed to make some business. When you okay. have enough leisure, enough free mind, then you have possibility to invent and propose something really new. This is was his idea. Sorry for interrupting. Yeah, no, no, it's a good, yeah, it's a good uh, contribution. Yeah, and uh, to to uh, he he used this um, principle also during his lectures uh, because sometimes during the very heavy proof of some difficult results, when all students are already uh, completely exhausted with following with with all the proof, he stopped and started to to describe something interesting like um, a bit a joke. Uh, from the life of some um, noble mathematicians like Feynman or Kolmogorov, so he was always made some some small pauses to to for for relaxations and to 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 start again with like reload of students. Okay, also I have learned uh, the I would say important Kolmogorov's principle um, uh, by uh, so when you are an examiner, so if there is a student who who is uh, passing his exam and, and you are the, the examiner, so you should follow the Kolmogorov's principle. What does it mean? So if the student uh, answers between good and very good, so uh, it's nice to, to, to put very good. So uh, make it very good instead of good. But if the student answers between very bad and um, fail, failed, very bad, but not failed or failed, then you should, as an examiner, uh, you should choose fail, failed, uh, in order to give to the student a chance to learn the material once again. I would say this, that pedagogically, it is a very good principle. Okay, uh, so um, the next slide, uh, the, the title is in, in German, my doctor father, Oleg Smolyanov. And so I really like this word. And Oleg Smolyanov also, he, he knew this word and he also um, considered himself as doctor father, doctor father, um, in, the kind, in the sense of uh, he was a kind of a father for all his students. And he always supported his students, not only mathematically, but but um, in all fields, uh, when there were problems with whatever, uh, problems in the family or whatever, so any, any problems which could occur, uh, he always tried to support, to encourage, and um, to calm down and to, yeah, to support uh, his, his students. 
so um, how he was as a supervisor. So first of all, he was uh, really a doctor father. Uh, second, uh, so um, um, he was a kind of he was a kind of a challenging person, and he always cho uh, chose um, topics for course and diploma works, which are just uh, parts of his current uh, actual uh, research projects. So it was really real science, and so you you had. To, to start with real science from the third year of studies. Uh, well, there's another question how much you can do, but sometimes you can do something and uh, um, at least you, you have the, 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 the aim which motivates you to do something. And it is a real, a real aim, a reasonable aim, and it's a real science. And it was, everything was very stimulating and made all of us very enthusiastic, understanding that this is the real science. And uh, so one of his expressions was like, uh, to become a mathematician, it is a kind of like to jump into a running train. So you don't know anything and you have jumped in a uh, jump, you have to jump into some topic of actual research, very of, of a high level. And, and and start start to 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 do to do to deal with this. Um, of course, it was hard, and uh, thanks to um, patience, kindness, openness, helpfulness of Professor Smalanov, it was possible to 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 make this jump into a running train. And also, of course, uh, just at the very beginning, each student has has more or less the same problem. And when you start to do something serious mathematically, uh, you, it, it does not uh, ha happens, it does not happen immediately that everything works perfectly. So usually nothing works. Uh, so you are trying and you are not able to, 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 to reach the aim. And, uh, and, and then um, each young scientist um, can become very disappointed and give up too early, I would say. So uh, Professor Smolanov was always encouraging and he always um, uh, uh, quoted some other noble mathematician. Probably, uh, I, I guess I can be wrong here, but but Volkov um, Volkov know, knows the name of this mathematician, who, uh, who's uh, Petrovsky. Yeah, he was the rector, uh, very famous mathematician in the theory of partial differential equations, differential equations and partial and differential equations and partial differential equations. And he was the rector of Moscow State University. And so this is his uh, sentence that standard state of a researcher is uh, search and failure. But nevertheless, um, it is not for, for giving up. It is uh, on the contrary for keeping on um, being optimistic and uh, keeping on trying and keeping on trying to, to, to find new ways, new approaches to, to avoid difficulties and uh, by, by choosing some other ways of considering this problem. Uh, so, uh, so I had something like this during my PhD studies. I also had a, um, a small problem which which uh, did not worked out for 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 a long time, and I was calling Professor Smolyanov almost each day, saying that I am still was not able to 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 fight uh, to deal with this pro to solve this small problem, and he was always answering. Definitely, it will work out. Don't worry, it will work out. And then in four months, finally, it will uh, worked out. So as I said, he was always very optimistic and positive thinking person. Yeah, so Professor Smolyanov was actually um, a, a very bright representative of the school of Kolmogorov. So, uh, so as Vladimir Bogachev already mentioned, uh, uh, Smolyanov has two supervisors, Famin and Shilov. Shilov was the official one and Famin was uh, an official one. But both of them somehow um, are related to Kolmogorov. And, and um, my feeling is that Kolmogorov was a kind of, um, uh, how to say, so that, that generation of all scientists were very, influenced by, by the personality of Kolmogorov and they tried to, um, uh, to follow his way in the sense of his, um, um, his um, style of communication uh, with other people, his style 
his attitude to science, his attitude to people, to his disciples, to sport, to culture. And um, so all these traditions of Kalmogorov school, they were somehow inherited also by Alex Malyanov. And here it is again in Russian, there are two sentences. They are um, uh, quotations of very famous um, Dr. Sons of um, Kalmogorov about Kalmogorov, but when I read them, I, I, I just say that uh, I can just replace the name of Kalmogorov by, by the name of Smolyanov, and it will be completely uh, the true um, statement about Smolyanov too. So the first uh, statement is about, uh, is, is, uh, so the first sentence is from Arnold, uh, Arnold. So he said, uh, he says that uh, from other, uh, from other known professors, Kalmogorov, uh, um, uh, yeah, so I have a problem with a mixture of German and English in my head. Uh, so there was a difference between the Kalmogorov and other known professors uh, in the following sense that Kalmogorov was always very, his attitude to, to the personality of each student was very uh, respective. He respected each student and he always was um, um, uh, was ready to listen to hear something new, unexpected and positive from his uh, from 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 the student. So the same attitude was uh, uh, Smalano had the same attitude to to all the students. He was always open uh, and was uh, ready to 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 see some great great uh, breakthroughs done by by his students. And the second sentence is done by Gnidenka, again about Kalmogorov, um, that Kalmogorov was um, devoted to science and his students, and he had a very um, wonderful talent to, to, to notice talented people. And um, he, how to say, um, probably some of my colleagues will help me to translate it into English. <laughs> He, so Kalmogorov, uh, um, so the, he, he did not save time for, for, for growing these talented students. So he, he really spent a lot of time for, for the students uh, to, to, to help them to grow, not only, not only scientifically, but also uh, personally. If you need uh, help in translation, I can try. I guess it is, I have already done the translation, more or less. So it's written in the last line that Kalmogorov was dedicated to science and to his students. And uh, he had distinguished talent to uh, find uh, uh, talented people. Uh, and uh, he was ability not to uh, be greedy in time uh, for uh, motivating and teaching uh, them. This was uh, told by Professor Gnidenka about Kalmogorov. Yes, okay. But as I, as, as I said, so completely the same can be said about Malyanov. And I, I think this is a kind of tradition of a Kalmogorov school. Okay, so further concerning uh, the personality of Alex Malyanov, um, he was really a romantic. So uh, his attitude to science was a pure romantic attitude. So he did science because he liked it, because he was interested in, in how this world, uh, this world uh, uh, is constructed, so how it works, this world. Uh, so his, uh, one of his um, sentences was that, uh, why Faraday has invented electromagnetic induction? Not because he, 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 had, he, he wanted to invent uh, an, an auto, mobile and to, to fulfill some project which has a very, um, very um, uh, important applications which can uh, give some money and so on and so forth. So Faraday has invented electromagnetic induction because he was interested in this, uh, uh, in this effect, because he was interested in the science and just, just for the sake of science, for the sake of uh, the truth, to understand how, how the world is and also uh, another another um, uh, so another thing which I learned from from Alex Malyanov 
It was uh, his uh, idea how one could check if some person has an ability of, uh, of doing research. And his answer was the following. If the person uh, finds a science, doing science interesting, then the person has this ability. So only, only this uh, is the indicator, indicator if the, there is ability of, of making research or not. And uh, um, also uh, quoting Kolmogorov, um, uh, Alex Marianov uh, repeated very often that, that uh, each science should be like, in a sense, like a child because children are very flexible and very open to new things and they're able, they are not so, so fast uh, settled and they, they, they are able to change their point of view. They're really open for, for new things. And uh, so Kalmagorov uh, said that he considered himself as the person of 14. So I, I don't know what, uh, in which age, uh, what was the scientific age of this of, of the child of scientific child inside Alex Malano, but he also liked this idea that scientists should be like in a sense like a child. And uh, uh, also uh, there is a, uh, above, above there is a, a quotation of Kalmagorov. I will translate it in a minute, but it was one of the uh, favorite um, um, quotations of Alex Malanov. And this quotation is very famous. This is as follows: at each uh, moment of time, there exists a very thin layer between trivial things and um, uh, unreachable things. Exactly in this thin layer, all mathematical uh, discoveries are done. It was said by Kalmagorov in, uh, in the year 1943. Okay, so I, I'm not sure how much time do I have, probably no time at all, but uh, I guess I have not that many slides, so probably I will continue. If, if no, just uh, in one, let me know. Well, you have five minutes for sure, no problem. Yeah. Okay, okay. So uh, as I said, Professor Smolyanov was always very enthusiastic and uh, considered uh, it's very important to support young researchers. So here, here you have a picture, you see a picture. It is done again in Kaiserslautern at the conference where some PhD student of Professor von Weizsäcker um, has catched Professor Smolyanov and asked him many different scientific questions and Smolyanov has answered. Well, um, so yes, uh, Alek uh, Georgievich, so uh, his soul was very young. He was always full of enthusiasm about everything related to science, about, uh, so he liked all the all events like um, conferences, uh, workshops, seminars, uh, communications with his colleagues, different trips, uh, collaborations, pro uh, collaboration projects. So he has a lot of research projects. Uh, he, he has a lot of co-authors, uh, he has more than 59 co-authors, he has uh, more than 350 publications, and I, I, I assume that he has visited a lot of different countries. And so you see a couple of photos here uh, in, on the left-hand side, you see Professor Smolyanov with Joachim Kupsch from Kaiserslautern and Vanya Remizov in his, I would say, uh, as, assume PhD studies or even just studies at the school. No, 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 bachelor student, there was bachelor student at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and so I, I was helped, helping uh, Professor Smolyanov to meet Professor Kupsch in the airport. Smolyanov so like it is fly. In yes, it is in Russia, in, in, in Moscow, near the Sheremetyevo airport. Smolyanov uh, was fond of flying, uh, and he often asked his students to meet him uh, in the airport. Uh, and uh, also he used the students who had cars, even that primitive cars, uh, to meet his so colleagues. The bachelor student is a very good car. <laughs> yes. Uh, that's so you see. It. Yes. Um, so uh, really here, Professor Smolyanov and uh, I uh, came uh, on that car to meet Professor, Professor Kupsch. Professor Kupsch was happy. Uh, this is a destroyed version of the famous Russian car, uh, Volga. Uh, and... Uh, um, at that moment, I, I was a, a runner of the internet forum of uh, people who drive those cars. Um, was quite a famous person uh, in that car type lovers. And Smolyanov told this car a tractor, uh, a tractor in, in Russian. Uh, <laughs> and he, he was uh, very fond of it. Uh, he... So not a tractor, but tractor. <laughs> yeah. 
yes yes so, so he um he, he really was uh, finding it funny that uh, this car really moves and can uh, really carry passengers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, so on the right hand side, you see again the picture from the uh, University of Kaiserslautern, and there you, you see uh, Alex Malianov with Heinrich von Weizsäcker and some other colleagues again during the conference. It, all the Photos are from the conference uh, dedicated to 60th birthday of Heinrich von Weizsäcker. Okay, so as I said, uh, Professor Smolanov had a lot of um, research projects and he has many co-authors. So I have, so this is a list of co-authors from uh, mathematical reviews, Matsinet, uh, and the photo again with some of the co-authors. So Professor Smolanov with me and Martin Rothaus and Wolfgang Bock during their visit uh, of Moscow State University. So it is exactly at Moscow State University, a chair of functional analysis. And so you see here even that some dissertation has arrived to the chair and everybody can, can, can read it. So this is the announcement on the blackboard. Okay, so uh, scientific school of Professor Smolyanov is also very big. Um, unfortunately, as I said, I have very few photos, so, uh, so we know that there are more than 40 uh, students of Professor Smolyanov who, who got his PhD, there are uh, around eight or more people among them who, who got their, so in English I, I would say habilitation, or in German habilitation, um, yeah, so some of them of course left science, but uh, but uh, some of them are still uh, in the uh, are active, and uh, uh, some of them are, are even here during uh, during this conference. So here in this picture, Alex, Alex Marianov with uh, with Nikolai Shamarov. Okay, uh, I also very happy to know that um, uh, Professor Amosov has taken several interviews of Alex Malianov. So this three are uh, done around seven years ago or a little bit early, earlier. And, and these uh, uh, interviews are um, just uh, last years. And uh, they, they, they are on Russian, but still, you, you, even if you don't understand Russian, you, you see uh, how the person um, reacts, how the person, how he speaks, and, and how how he smiles, and and it, it's really says a lot about the person. And this is uh, the second picture with this blackboard. So here, Professor Smolyanov has already finished his writing, and he has written Feynman formula on the blackboard. So uh, yes, so this is the last slide in my small talk. Uh, so, as a summary, uh, following the gold rule of the speaker summarizing, Professor Smolyanov was a wonderful person, uh, very, very bright, uh, very um, uh, talented person, uh, very bright and deep and open and friendly person who has influenced a lot, not only me, but I assume that all, all his students, not only mathematically, but also personally. And so, I guess this is a uh, equally important contribution to, to Russian science to, to, grow, to grow people um, in all senses. So uh, it is 100% um, uh, of his um, contribution that I'm a mathematician uh, and uh, all, all my interests in science are, are formed by, by him. Um, and, uh, and now I say in Russian, Svetlaya Pamit Alego Georgievich. Thank, thank you for your attention. Uh, Svetla Pamit in English is rest in peace, our okay. dear teacher. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, thank you, Jana. Should uh, I can share my screen? Yeah, I guess. You can stop the screen sharing. Who wants to be the next? I think that we should uh, um, start from those who have slides. If someone has slides, please uh, turn on your camera, your microphone, and say that I have slides, I will be the next. And if uh, no one has slides, then uh, I propose just uh, 
to all of us turn on our cameras and uh, start sharing our memories um, just orally. Do anyone have slides or pictures to show? John, maybe you, do you have any photos? Okay, uh, hopefully, can you see this? Good, thank you. So, um, as you know, I'm Oleg's son-in-law. Um, I met Margarita, actually I met Oleg slightly earlier when I was a postdoc in Rome with Luigi Cardi, and Oleg visited same time I was there, and slightly later, Margarita came. Um, since then, I got a position in Aberystwyth in Wales, in, in Britain. Um, and fairly early on, Oleg came to visit us. This is a picture of Oleg, Margarita, um, Sitting in the high chair is my son, so Oleg's Vanuk, uh, John Jr. So um, Oleg was visiting us at um, a conference we have in a place called Greganog. So this is a mathematical symposium. Um, the other guy I'm sure you recognize, this is Roger Penrose, who was one of the other speakers who's since, of course, become famous for getting Nobel Prize. Um, so this was one of the earliest visits Oleg made. He made several visits to us over the years. Um, his Vanuk is now 15 years old, so time flies. Uh, but as you see, he was uh, very proud of his Vanuk. Okay, um, so I think that's a nice picture. Um, whether I can tell any stories about Oleg, um, I, th I think he was very spiritual in some senses, um, not in the sense of organized religion, but uh, I think his favorite book was Master and Margarita, which um, I think that shaped a lot of his general philosophy towards life and so on. Um, I think he used to read a lot of books, but I think he had his own algorithm for reading books, which removed a lot of the redundancy. Um, so I think the first book he read was Anna Karenina. And as you know, you realize fairly quickly when you're reading large books that you don't have to read every word or indeed every page, maybe every second page to begin with then every, um, 10th page or maybe every 100th page at the end. So um, Oleg used to say that he had a method of reading books, which was to read them diagonally. So um, it sort of suggests that you get a book, you find its eigenvalues, and you just look at the eigenvalues. So in this way, he managed to read a huge number of books. <laughs> so. Um, Yes, that, that's my contribution. I have many happy memories of him coming to visit. Um, I never actually got to Russia, but I, I did visit him once or twice in Kaiserslautern, along with Joachim Krupsch, uh, one of his other collaborators, um, and also in Switzerland with uh, another of our collaborators, uh, Tudor Ratu, over the years. So a lot of fun memories. Okay, so that's that's my contribution. Um, I'm not sure how I stopped to share this. Ah, there's a stop share button. Okay. Thank Sorry, you. Dan, I can pass on to somebody else. Thanks. 
who wants to be the next? Gloria, maybe you? Yes, maybe I want to add some words. Uh, I'm sorry for my bad English. Uh, Professor Mayanov was my scientific supervisor. I want to add some words to the beautiful talks by Professor Bogachev, uh, to uh, Yana, Professor Gov. And uh, no, I remember when I was, I also was a two-year student in Moscow University, and it was my time to choose the scientific supervisor. And uh, I decided to, no, I was interested in functional analysis. And I remember how, how I met Professor Mayanov in the first time, and I was very impressed by his uh, larger than life personality. It was obvious, it was absolutely obvious about the, that he had this personality. Uh, he met many good people on his seminar, the, uh, good friends. Uh, some of them I knew before then. I have met uh, Professor Spanian, it was Professor Shumarov. So I decided to go uh, to, to his seminar. It was very important for uh, he, uh, he, he told so many interesting stories about in the history of Mars and his, his life, and uh, uh, many his stories are um, uh, it was support and uh, uh, and support in the mathematical way, and uh, I remember many his uh, his advices, uh, and I don't know, I want to wear some moments that I remember uh, he asked me to, to read some books and I said him that these books are unreadable. It is impossible to read them. And he says that, of course, uh, they are unreadable because uh, it, it is very good because it means that this uh, area has some open problems. It is our task to do this area clear. And when I said, he asked me to write some papers, and I said that I can understand many notions from here, from these papers. And he said to me that uh, after authors of these papers, they didn't know nothing about these notions before they wrote this paper. <laughs> so no. and now I'm still living. <laughs> Uh, like the uh, yeah yeah so I, I can contribute that <clears throat> uh, Alex Malian always said that uh, a good way to learn something is uh, to write a book on the subject of course of course <laughs> uh, yes and it's way to understand some theme is to write the paper on this theme <laughs> it's uh, and uh, it is, was very good word for me. Uh, I enjoyed his scientific status. Uh, I think that he did like abstractness uh, for the sake of abstractness in the math. And it is very important because I think that it's something like, no, it is because math is very abstract. <laughs> it is problem. So he didn't enjoy it too much abstract. And he uh, and enjoyed it. Uh, and uh, he, uh, has got very optimistic nature. Uh, it was very important for me. And I remember that one day you know, after university, uh, I follow him to his, uh, to his home, you know, in the direction of his home. And he talked to me about uh, his optimistic nature. And uh, he showed me uh, the words write, wrote it, uh, written on the pavement near his house. It was smile. You know, it was smile, and he really smiled when, uh, when he showed me this words. And uh, this picture is uh, um, in front of my eyes here. 
remember that he showed me this <laughs> his uh, words on the pavement near his house, uh, on the asphalt near his house. Please smile. Thank you very much. I'm sorry for it's difficult to speak after this. Thank you, Boris. After this loss. Thank you very much. Thank you, Boris. Uh, I propose now to 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 provide a possibility to say something to someone who was not uh, a PhD student uh, of Professor Smolyanov, uh, but uh, was his collaborator. Um, please, who wants? Luigi, you want to say a few words? Yeah, I, yes, I, have, I will say more than a few words in my talk, but I have prepared in this special session three photos. And Good. maybe I can share the screen to show them to you. I hope I succeed. Just a moment. Dear um, participants, could you also send these photos to the organizers just for, for making a collection for the future book about Alex Malano? Yes, just one moment. I have yeah. to, uh, to, to put them on, all three, just one moment. I cannot move, ah, here. While you are preparing, I, I, I would like to yeah. say that when Professor Smolyanov was alive, uh, he was uh, our um, connecting, uh, connecting person. And uh, we all loved him and talked a lot uh, with him. But now when he passed away, uh, the connecting, uh, we are uh, persons who connect each of us to Professor Smolyanov. So we should communicate with each other, exchange those photos and so on. So please, if you have any materials on Professor Smolana, please send to the organizers. If you, we are preparing a special volume dedicated to him, if you would like to write a, a paper or contribute in any way to that volume, please do it, uh, indicate your wish, because now really indeed, uh, Jana, Luigi, Boria, myself, and we all are persons who connect each of us to Smolyanov. We, we, we yes. should understand it. Thank you. Well, you, you should circulate what, the most important information concerning uh, the book on Smolyanov, uh, the deadline for authors, because now a lot of deadlines are accumulating. And so please, let us know as soon as possible. So I can I share the screen just to show. So the, the first picture is the one, uh, just a moment, uh, here. You see in the center is Oleg. This was the Levico conference of 19, of 2010. We were already very good friends. We, our friendship began in 1991 in Roma. We, and uh, our collaboration lasted for for all this time until uh, until today until uh, until uh, let us say two year two or three years ago when uh, the COVID began and even in the time I had the pleasure to speak to with him during uh, the conferences and uh, because he was very. <clears throat> we, we, we were using the time before or just after uh, the beginning of the talks to exchange some ideas. So this is uh, the Levico conference and he always, he always attended the QP conferences. Then the second, the second, uh, um, just a moment, how to, I don't know how to do this. Just a moment, I will do so. I, I interrupt. And I reshare. The second one was not is a is a photo of a photo. And uh, and the second one is a photo of uh, Oleg with uh, uh, Ilya Prigozhin. And uh, uh, <clears throat> we we were together uh, very uh, uh, how to say. We were frequenting together all the Solvay conferences uh, because uh, Prigozhin 
and uh, Smolian, Frigojin, Smolianov, and me had a dif different uh, contact, were put in contact uh, by the same person who was Antonio, who, <clears throat> Ioannis Antonio, who was um, one of the main, probably the best student of uh, Ilya Prigojin. And then, uh, you see, this, com this photo I did where uh, 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 Oleg Zmalyanov organized the conference in honor of Fomin. And among many, many photos that were exposed, I noticed this. And so I photographed, I made a photo of a photo. Okay, so this is the second one. And the third one is one, just a moment. The, the third one is the one that I did during the conference, always the conference that he organized a few years ago in Moscow in honor of Fomin. And you recognize, of course, several of Zakbayev behind, behind Smoliano. So I, collecting this photo, I realized that I have a uh, much less photo of Oleg who that I really would like to have. So these are the only three that I could, uh, but I, I would uh, like to share them with you. I will send them to you, okay? So thank, thank you. you. Thank you for attention. Thank you very much. Who wants to be the next? Probably we should ask Professor Albiverio to add some words if he is with us. Yes, well, I will do, but uh, um, unfortunately, at some point I have to pay for my disorder. You see, there is some disorder in the no back. No problem. And I was looking for pictures, photos, I took that serious, but I first there is some difficulties in going to the Institute nowadays because of the pandemics. And I would have to look into the old shelves I have there and I didn't manage somehow. Well, I had a look, but I didn't find them fortune. But uh, there is something else besides photos is what one has inside everybody was. Of course, that is also not easy to, to express, but you did beautifully, a uh, former student, uh, all of you who were speaking. Uh, there are a lot of memories and, uh, with me. I have also many, but uh, I have, so to say, need a little more time. Anyhow, I would be happy to contribute for uh, some paper or some memories, if there is some uh, something, as you mentioned, there will be some publication. So, well, first of all, the, I mean, I will say something in the afternoon uh, in this direction, so I don't want to uh, uh, deepen it now, but for sure, we, I don't, yeah, maybe, Somebody can help me. I'm not sure when we exactly met the first time with uh, uh, Alec. Um, probably in Moscow, I, I was at Gelfand's seminar, one of Gelfand's famous Gelfand seminar. In 81, I was there with Raphael Krohn and, uh, and we were, because we were visiting Moscow, invitation was mainly by Dobrushin, Sinai, but many and uh, other uh, uh, members of the uh, Alomanoff Institute, well, of the various institutes, actually, they were. But there were seminar Lomonosov by Sinai in the Sinai seminar, and there was Dobrushin seminar there. We were speaking. 
and then in Gelf, and then Gelf had heard about our presence there, and uh, then we got invited to participate in the seminar, and as um, Gelf used to do, he wouldn't tell them program and he, and he certainly didn't tell us that he, he expected us to say something so we had to um, to, imp, to make some imp, uh, improvisation uh, some spontaneous presentation in a way so we, we got maybe 10 seconds to exchange our opinion, me and Raphael, and then we decided only one of us should get up and Raphael was much more able to present quickly something. So, and then, and, and that I saw many, many, and I met many participants, I suppose that Ole was also there, but I'm not sure about this. Um, then, uh, there were other visits, and, uh, and then for sure at some point we, we met in, in, in Germany, but and also at other conferences. And, uh, and uh, Jana was underlying the forest, and there were many going uh, through, the, going to walk in the forest, and one for sure in Bielefeld. Uh, which uh, there is this Teutoburg Wald, and uh, and this was a way to communicate, and uh, uh, but also there was another uh, opportunity. This is not to say made by nature, but by humanity that uh, that we have telephone, and whenever whenever uh, Alec was uh, traveling, he would call me. And the middle, even like a, a a play of guessing. So it he told me, please try to guess with whom I am. <laughs> and uh, and then of course most of the time I was wrong, sometimes not. So but uh, this was a, a a conversation on the phone to have some plan to meet again, and where and where much much was made was left to chance, but there were, there were students coming with uh, Alexander von Humboldt fellowships, for instance, which were Hrennikov and uh, also at some point uh, uh, um, Vladimir uh, Bogachev was in Bielefeld mainly, but we also met on that occasion. And, uh, and uh, Jana, I met in Kaiser Laut, by the way. So this was in the 90s, starting in the 90s, 94, so at least 10 years later than uh, I mentioned in, in Moscow, which I would really like to find out. Uh, and then there was uh, many, many conferences in Levico and, uh, and with students. And, and the one of maybe also on the more personal side, he liked very much to entertain himself with my daughter at that time. So in the 90s, she was a teenager, well, beginning teenager, but uh, they had very nice uh, conversation. And all the, every time he asked me, how is she? And, and then he added, and if she marries, don't forget to invite me. I would be a great, great pleasure. Well, life, you cannot command what happens in life. So there was no marriage, but, you know, my daughter is well, but she lives in Munich. So in the last few years, there were less opportunities to meet, unfortunately, uh, with uh, Oleg himself since I retired, but I have very, very, very good memories. And we have joint papers so I mentioned today, but uh, above all, I have very, very strong, uh, good uh, memories and they will last. And that is all we can after somebody uh, um, 
passed away. So we live, uh, he lives and there in, his, in the memories of those who remain. And I think this is very important, especially nowadays where everything goes quickly, but uh, don't, um, we shouldn't forget this side of life. It is probably the most profound that we are all connected and we don't, all we don't know where we come and where we go, but we, we enjoy these moments and after this moment are no longer with us, uh, that what remains is also very important because this is a collective, social, collective uh, uh, life we have. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. Thank you, Professor Albedero. Uh, due to the schedule, the formal time for this uh, um, memorial event has finished, but uh, at the end of the day, we will have uh, another session dedicated to our mem memories, which is not limited to time. We can uh, speak uh, in the evening uh, forever, uh, no problem. So uh, please, uh, you are welcome to come uh, to the evening session due to the schedule. Uh, 